Hello and welcome to the Cozy Painter. My name is Sky, and today I'm painting a White Scar Stormseer that I converted at a Warhammer Open event. Stormseers are psychers who reflect the ancient customs of Chagorian shaman from before the Great Crusade and embody the discipline that all White Scars live by. I'll discuss the development of the White Scars from being a legion of noble savages to a more complex brotherhood full of soulful, introspective warriors and mystics. Then I'll go over the Stormseer's contributions to the Librarius project, as well as their ideology and how they differ from a normal Psyker. Finally, I'll dive into the day-to-day -day duties of the Stormseers in modern White Scars culture. The White Scars were one of the original 12 chapters made in the Rogue Trader era of Warhammer in 1987. However, the White Scars didn't get a full-length entry into the Black Library canon until nearly 30 years later. The White Scars' identity through most of their lives was a loose stereotype of Mongolians in space. Their identity overlapped pretty heavily with Space Wolves, who were kind of a grab bag of Germanic barbarians. The Space Wolves leaned deeper into Viking aesthetic and became more savage over the years, while the White Scars languished in obscurity. It wasn't until Black Library author Chris Wright took the reins and began developing what is now considered the de facto identity of the White Scars. From 2012's Brotherhood of the Storm to 2021's Warhawk, Mr. Wright has dragged the White Scars from the dustiest corners of the lore front and center. Through these entries into the canon, the Scars have become one of the most impactful players in the Horus Heresy, as well as a fully developed and nuanced culture of Space Marines. The White Scars of today are warrior poets who are fulfilled through purity of battle. They're driven to hunt their quarry across the galaxy, but spend equal time reflecting on their actions and discussing philosophy. They practice calligraphy and music in equal measure to strategy and swordplay. Perhaps the most defining attribute of the White Scars is their independence. As I mentioned in my White Scars Dreadnought video, the chapter doesn't care for societal expectations. Unlike the Ultramarines, who are born bureaucrats and statesmen, the White Scars want nothing more than to be left to their own devices at the far reaches of the galaxy. They understand the need for a unified empire and will fight to defend it, but they don't feel beholden to a pencil pusher thousands of light years away. It's this sense of individualism, combined with their warrior discipline as well as their respect for the natural order, that combine into a philosophy that the White Scars live by. The Path of Heaven. The Path of Heaven is the idea to push everything you do to its utmost limit, but to have the knowledge and discipline to stop before tumbling over the edge. It's pursuit of perfection in all things, tempered by the wisdom that perfection is impossible and its pursuit is ruinous. The path of heaven is a tightrope over an endless abyss, and if you should fall, the abyss will swallow you whole. It's appropriate that the path of heaven is a concept developed by the ancient shaman and stormseers of their homeland, Mr. Wright's contributions to White Scar's lore has turned them into a chapter with very capable psychers. Even before the Horus Heresy, the Stormseers were among the first to realize that the immaterium from which psychic power is channeled was alive and perhaps even malevolent. The Path of Heaven philosophy was born from this realization. Those that carelessly drew power from the warp would be devoured by it. To the ancient Stormseers, the path of heaven was tapping into the immaterium and stopping before the dark entities dwelling there noticed your intrusion. Compare this philosophy to that of the Thousand Suns. No other legion boasted such aptitude for warpcraft. That's not to say that they were alone in their individual talent. 
Chief Stormseer Yesuge was considered a pure and kindred spirit by Araman, one of the most capable psychers in the entire fiction. However, the Thousand Sons believed themselves to be the masters of the warp, and their arrogance would prove to be their downfall. During the Council of Nikea, where the Empire would decide if the training of psychers would be allowed in the legions, the Thousand Sons, Blood Angels, and our favorite White Scars would be in attendance to argue in favor of psyker development. Magnus the Red wanted unrestrained access and training of Warpcraft, whereas the opposition wanted a complete ban of psychers in all legions. Stormseer Yesuge offered a compromise. Training could be continued under strict supervision and regulation. An idea that was shot down then, but is practiced in the present-day Empire in 40k. In the end, psychers would be banned from use in all the Space Marine Legions, and everyone who exhibited psychic talent would be forced to repress it. Of course, the White Scars don't care much for edicts and regulation. The Stormseers, and Yesuge specifically, would prove instrumental to the survival of humanity in the fires of the Horus Heresy. The Stormseers of 40k have a much more active role in the operation of the chapter than most other psychers. Every 10 summers, they return to Chagoris to oversee the induction of neophytes through various trials. When a brotherhood within the chapter needs a new con, the Stormseers gather to test the candidates through mysterious and often deadly ritual. The fifth brotherhood of the White Scars is known as the Stormwrath Brotherhood and they work closely with the Stormseers to monitor recruits graduating into full-fledged Battle Brothers. The Fifth Brotherhood also employs the Stormseers in combat situations in greater numbers than the other Brotherhoods. The Stormseers are the spiritual center of the White Scars, as well as military advisors and deadly warriors in their own right. With this project, I wanted to convey the theme of manipulating storm clouds and really lean into the concept of a storm sorcerer. From the freehand abstraction of rolling clouds on the inside of his cloak, to the smoke lit from within like a storm cloud crackling with lightning. I'm building this army to be as close to Codex compliant as I can while still having room for unique conversions and painting choices. For example, while I was working on this model, I learned that psychers in the Librarius have three different ranks. My choice to put a psychic hood on this model meant that he's a third level psyker, which has specific iconography to designate his rank. That's the freehand design that I painted on the back of his cloak. My choice to paint the symbol of the Stormwrath Brotherhood on his right leg is not necessarily required, but I wanted the model to be cohesive with the rest of the army leadership. The White Scars are one of my favorite factions in all of 40k. Their focused intensity, tempered by wisdom, is really appealing in a world where no one really questions what's going on around them. The work that Mr. Wright has done to elevate the identity of the White Scars in the lore is nothing short of remarkable, and I'm really excited to see where this army build will go in the future. I want to thank you for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've been Sky from The Cozy Painter. Until next time, stay cozy.